Ooh, I almost kicked it. Oh my gosh. Okay. So we're going to be talking about the day I gave birth. That comes birthday. <laughs> and should we get like, just talk about it or should we get like your side of the story and then mine or that might be too long? No, we'll just talk about it. I won't just jump in. We'll okay. Just jump in. Okay. So I'll go ahead and start off. Um, I'll try not to get emotional because this day was just a very weird, weird day, crazy day, crazy time in my life. Um, to start off, my dad had just passed away and beginning of the week, my family sat down, we all sat down and I was about to give birth like in two weeks. Yeah, so my due date was March 14th and it was February 23rd when my dad passed away. And they sat me down and they said, okay, when should we have the services? What would you be comfortable with? Should we wait until after you give birth or do you want to have it now? Like, what do you think? And so I honestly thought I was going to make it to my due date. Um, so it was just such a hard decision, a lot of pressure on me to, <laughs> as Dixie, she's locked out of our room, so, <sighs> Dixie yeah, come in, see you later. <laughs> oh my god, okay, anyway, yeah, they kind of, I mean, I don't know how much you want to get into, but I feel like everyone in that situation really put a lot of pressure on you. For yeah, everyone, which is not cool. Yeah, there was a lot of pressure put on me. Everyone was like, "What do you want? Like, this is it's your decision, Sarah. That's all. That's what it was the whole time." Which you know, uh, yeah. So okay, I said, "Okay, let's have the services this Friday." We were at like the mortuary, the funeral services place, and they gave us dates that they had available and friday was one of them which was march 1st and i said okay sure like let's have it that day and let's just go with it anyway that was on friday the the services were supposed to be sorry i'm like trying to make sure i get all the points correct and so all day thursday i was like thinking in my head that i just know that I'm going to go into labor tomorrow. I just felt it. Not like physically felt it, but just mentally, I just knew it. So yeah, 1 a.m. came. Dixie, <laughs> do you see her? Relax. You probably can't see her on the camera. She's she is out. like turning in circles over here trying to get comfortable. <laughs> um, okay, so Friday morning comes, one o'clock, I get up to pee. And as I am going to pee, <laughs> my water breaks. And at that point, I'm like, did my water just break or did I pee myself? Like, <laughs> I have no idea because it wasn't like the movies or like what some people say. Like, everyone's like, there's going to be a big burst of like water. Yeah, I remember we went like earlier because you thought you were maybe going into labor. And mm -hmm. the lady said it would be... Cause you you know you thought that your water broke and she said yeah. no it, you'll notice it it's like a two liter bottle oh, of yeah. water yeah I so you were that. expecting like yeah and everyone too. always says like it's gonna be like a gush like you know whatever but it wasn't like that much it just honestly felt like I just like started peeing a little bit anyway we won't get into all the gross <laughs> details too much but um so anyway almost instantly after that I just started getting these horrible contractions and so I laid down and I was like okay I'm just gonna try and go to sleep and it was just like contraction after contraction after contraction and yeah I, I like woke him up and I was like what did I even say I don't like, even remember I think I'm having contractions and I think my water broke yeah and so he's like half asleep and he's like okay well just try and get some sleep that's not what he said that is <laughs> I a think lie. so 
No, that was such a lie. What'd you say? I said, what do you mean you think your water broke? And oh, okay. you explained it to me, and I was like, well, let's go in. And you're like, no, I don't think it did break. I'll try to just go back to sleep. And I said, no, let's go in. And you're like, no, I don't think it broke. I just, let me just go back to sleep. Okay. I'm like, all right, if yeah. you want to go back to sleep, we can go back to sleep. But if your water broke, we need to go in. Yeah. And not tell you to go back to sleep. Okay, I don't know. I maybe, maybe didn't. But <laughs> anyway, so, um, yeah, I was trying to go to sleep. And I'm laying there. And they just kept getting stronger, longer, stronger, longer. And I was like, okay, you know what? Well, I'm going to jump in the shower because I want to be... 110 percent clean and shaved and <laughs> everything and this was after you already woke me up and we decided we were gonna go yeah because i was like okay you know what we're gonna go like i think i'm gonna i know i'm gonna have this baby and so i jumped in the shower and they just kept getting worse and worse and worse <laughs> like i couldn't hardly even take a shower because i was in so much pain and so he was in the shower too in the other bathroom getting ready and stuff like that and i think i text you right because mm -hmm. i i text him because he was in the other shower and i was like we gotta go like now right i don't remember that i think i, I remember by the time it took you to take a shower and get ready i took a shower i got ready i packed your overnight bag i packed his overnight bag i packed it all in the car i packed the car seat like that yeah, he did family. all of that within like I feel like thirty minutes. If that, it might even been yeah, it might have been sooner I because I was like, okay, we gotta go. Like it was like the worst pain of my but life. But you already kind of started packing a bag, right? You were already kind of little by little. I had already packed stuff. all my yeah. stuff like weeks before that. Yeah. I think I just needed like to pack small things like my phone charger, like my makeup, like small stuff like that. But for the most part, I already had all my stuff packed and. At this point, we're going to the hospital, and he even ran a few red lights, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. It was early, though. It was really early. I think this was, like, at 2 or 3 in the morning. Yeah, it was... No, yeah. it was a little bit later, but, I mean, not that much later. It was, but... it was really early. So we get to the really hospital, good. get checked in, everything like that, and by that point, my contractions were just so unbelievably horrible close together I was like begging them for an epidural and I was in so much pain that they even gave me medication before the epidural because I was just in so much pain and I was in labor for a total of 15 hours was it 15 hours? yeah 15 hours and yeah I'll let you talk a little bit <laughs> No, I was just going to say, like, we already knew where to go. Because some mm -hmm. people, like, if you had not had the incident, you had it once or twice where you thought you were going to labor before. Um, I think twice. Twice. If you I had a very complicated pregnancy. And but, every time something was happening, I would, like, call my doctor. And they were like, no, you need to come in right now. So. But the good thing, we knew where to go. Like, if we would have, if that had been the first time we had to go. Yeah. We probably wouldn't Because it was on the other side of the hospital where your actual doctor appointments were with your mm -hmm. OG. OBGYN. OBGYN. <laughs> so that was good. Like, yeah. I, you know, if you're a first time parent or going to be a first time parent, I definitely recommend like figuring all that stuff out beforehand because I would have gotten stressed. Yeah. But then they, they put you in a room before they took you to it. Yeah, right? they had and me in triage because they have to make sure that your water did break before they can actually. Um, admit you and make sure that you're okay to get the epidural and whatnot but yeah they came so fast gave me the epidural and by then I was just they would given me some other medication I forgot the name of it um and I wanted to film all this right? oh yeah so wasn't allowed to I had always been okay to film it <clears throat> until that day um, he wanted to film everything and I think I just had so much going on and I was just I was so full of emotion and like I, I don't know I just had so much going on I was just like no I don't want you to film anything I hardly even wanted him to take pictures because I was just I don't know I was just in a whole different headspace and 
I was like mad but happy at the same time because mad because I was going to miss my dad's services. I was going to get to miss everything. But I was also happy to miss it because I didn't know how I was going to like live through that basically, you know. I don't want to cry. But um it would have been hard. Yeah. To go. I, like it would have been Yeah, it would have been super hard for you to do. Yeah, and I'm glad like um my dad didn't want that to be a sad day. He wanted it to be a happy day. So that is why I think God made me go into labor that morning. So I'm thankful it all happened that way. But yeah, crazy thing. Um so I was in labor pretty much the whole entire day. My dad's services were at like five o'clock, I think. Yeah, five o'clock. And I had Beckham at like 4.17. So my family and everything, like my mom, my brother, were there at the hospital with me. But it was like, I had him just perfectly on time where they could still make my dad's services, you know? So it was just like, a, I'm sure it was a crazy day for them. Because, oh yeah, because your mom got there like probably like at like five, four or five in the morning. Yeah, we called her yeah. and she was there like right away. And another funny thing because before I even went into labor and stuff, I was so nervous about the whole thing, and I was just like, I didn't want anyone to see me like giving <laughs> birth. I don't know. I just I was very like I'm very to myself. You didn't even want me in the room. Yeah, I That's was like even works. worried about having him in the room. I'm like, I don't, I don't know. And he was like, no, I'm going to be in the room. Duh, hello. And I was like, no, I don't want anybody else. I don't want my best friend. I don't want my mom. I don't want nobody. And yeah, my mom was there throughout the whole entire thing. I think I was just in so much pain that I just didn't care. Like, I just didn't care well, at You're all. jumping around a lot. So, like, you had a complication because you couldn't, you were, your, con your contractions were going, 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 and you were pushing and it wasn't really doing anything, right? <sighs> yeah, I pushed for a total of three hours. I was finally dilated and everything. And the crazy part about it is I got the epidural twice. So, they gave me the epidural long story short i was pushing pushing for a few hours and nothing was happening nothing was like progressing well i guess like they could see his head and stuff like that but it was actually kind of scary because there was a lot of complications going on and they were getting ready to give me a c-section and they the nurses and doctors started using all these codes and stuff and they were freaking out and you could like kind of hear them whispering me and freaking out to each other. And we were just kind of like, what's going on? Well, you asked for the C-section, right? You didn't want to, you didn't want to push anymore. Yeah, I, I had yeah. been pushing for like two hours. And not only that, his, uh, Beckham's heart rate was like sky high. My heart rate was sky high. And he was developing a fever, um, an infection. And so was I, and I was like vomiting, I was shaking, I was like hyperventilating, and I threw up all over my mom. So we, so it was her, her mom and me were like holding her legs, <laughs> and we were helping, and they were instructing us what to do, and oh like God. I was on this side, and then finally they were like, well, if you guys can switch, I don't know why they told us to switch, so me and your mom switched, and like 10 seconds later, you like turned to the right where I was and you threw up all over your mom. Yeah. And I tried telling her and I, I was in so much pain. I was like shaking and I tried telling her like, move, move. I'm going to throw up. And I like said something and I remember her being like, what, what? And she like got closer <laughs> to me and I was just like, Bleh. I threw but up it, all no, over her. It wasn't, it wasn't like weird. No one even really, at that point, it's yeah. weird. No one like. It's weird at that point. Like it. nothing is gross. Like yeah, you're you just even, so it's like. nothing. Your adrenaline is so high. I think you're just like so excited about seeing the baby and there was just so much going on. And so, yeah, I was just, I was so full of emotion and physically in so much pain that I was like, 
give me a freaking c-section like let's do a freaking c-section let's get this baby out like i'm tired of pushing i can't they wanted me they were trying to get me to do all this crazy stuff <laughs> they were like they made you turn around yeah they made me like get in like a dog position they were making me pull a sheet like do tug of war they were doing remember when they got the mirror and they made you look? yeah oh yeah so the nurses in the room they were like do you want to see i think if you see you'll like push harder and all stuff i'm like no i don't want to see like i don't know i'm just i did not want to see and the nurse anyway she's like no we're gonna get a mirror and so like propped a mirror like right a there a huge mirror, mirror <laughs> huge ass mirror and so yeah i couldn't help but look because they're like look and like every time yeah so uh yeah so they got your regular doctor your ob -G oh yeah so finally they were going to do a c-section mm -hmm. and they were like okay yeah we probably need to do a c-section like we both had an infection or heart rates yada yada and then my actual doctor, my OBGYN that had been my doctor throughout my whole pregnancy got there and she knew what was going on. She knew that my dad passed away and she was like an incredible doctor. We had a horrible experience with our first doctor. We actually had to switch doctors after a few weeks, but then we'll save that story for another time. But um, she got there and she came in and she was like, oh, I don't know. What did she say to me? She made you push again. She yeah, she was like, it. I think you can do it. Let's try it. Like, let's just try it a few more times. And I'd already been like resting a little bit. And they gave me the epidural again because they stopped my epidural because they were like, I think if you mm. feel the contractions and you feel everything, like you'll get this baby out. And no, it just made it worse. I was in so much pain. Forgot about that. Yeah. And so finally she was like, no, let's start the epidural again. Let's get her pushing again, yada, yada. So almost like instantly when I started pushing again, that's when he started coming out. I just remember them being like, oh my God, okay, he's coming. And he was sideways too, remember? Oh yeah, he was sideways. Craziest thing, like my whole pregnancy, he was transverse, which instead of being face down, he was sideways, like laying in a hammock the whole time. <laughs> and like... I think honestly that's why I was so uncomfortable during my whole I mean everyone's uncomfortable but he was literally sideways his feet were in my ribs they were actually gonna have to do this procedure if he didn't finally turn head down they were gonna have to like I forgot what it's called there's a certain name for it where they go in and flip him and thank god I didn't have to do that but yeah as a flip and pull like that. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I forgot remember, about that I remember that so the whole time, we forgot to mention that, the whole time I was pushing, they were trying to like turn him. Oh yeah. Every time I was pushing, they had like their hands in me. That sounds disgusting, but just being honest and real with you, they had their hands in me and were like trying to turn him as I was pushing. So oh, it was just, it was and The whole time you were pushing in the beginning, I was doing the PowerPoint. Remember? Oh, yeah. Okay. That's another thing that was Please. so horrible. Um, yeah, AJ was in charge of doing the PowerPoint for my dad services, like putting together a slideshow of pictures and the music and stuff like that. And of course, like we thought we had time. I mean, we weren't expecting me to go into labor. So as I was in labor, he's trying to put together the PowerPoint and everything because I mean, no one else was able to do it everyone was because well, we had everything so we had like 70 pictures oh yeah i remember some of them a lot of them were in frames mm -hmm. i walked into the hospital with the laptop a stack of pictures a and like scanner. a big ass printer scanner like yeah this big and, and you'd be pushing and then they'd take a break and i'd go sit down and like scan 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 and then they'd, you'd start pushing again uh, and i'd go like that back and forth yeah so it was a we got it done at the, at, on time yeah it was just it was seriously like that day like I, that's the only thing I regret is not having you record everything because yeah. I would love to look back on it and oh yeah, I could just cry thinking about that day because when Beckham finally came, he was just like, oh, they just got him. I don't, what did they do? They got him and just threw him on your stomach. Right? Yeah. They just got him. 
and trust. like threw me on my step, threw him on my <laughs> stomach, <laughs> not threw me on my stomach. And this sounds really weird, but I've always seen like babies come out like in movies and you know yada yada, and they're always like covered Gross. in blood and covered in like white stuff and like. I mean, that's just natural. That's how they come out. But he came out like he just got a bat. Condition. I'm, I'm not even <laughs> joking. He came out like perfect. Like he wasn't covered in any of that stuff, which is really weird. Um, um, oh, you, you know what? I forgot to mention too that you want, so you wanted nobody in the room. Mm -hmm. And by the time you had him, oh. there was like 10, almost 15 people, 10, 15 people in the room at yeah. that point. There was like, and oh, they were all yeah. like doctors and nurses. It was because they were getting ready to rush me. So yeah. what I learned mm -hmm. after is that my placenta had, I think, I, I forget the verbiage exactly, but something ruptured, basically. There was no amniotic fluid left. So basically, like, he hadn't, like, he was running out of oxygen and it was just getting really bad. So and if you would have slept a little bit long. So, yeah. you know, a word of advice. If you think your water broke, don't go back to sleep. Go in. Right? Yeah. Well, I didn't know if my water had broke. But, yeah, it was just crazy. Anyway, he came out perfect. Like, he Maybe wasn't. Maybe little noise. Yeah, he All wasn't right. even crying. It was the weirdest thing. Like, <laughs> they laid him on me. And it was almost like a like a breath of relief that he gave. He was like, ah. Yeah, like, like that's the best way yeah. I could explain it. Everyone laughed. Everyone was like, was like laughing thing. and like, oh my god, because it was crazy. Like he wasn't like, Meh, like crying like normal babies do. I swear it was the weirdest thing. Oh yeah, and he was like holding on to me like a monkey wrapped around me, like literally <laughs> squeezing me. And oh yeah, it was just like the craziest experience then, ever. Um, you want to talk about the first night that we were there? Super quick. How stressful it was for me. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was so funny. Um, yeah, because I was just exhausted, of course, from like pushing and just, of course, like being in labor. And so poor AJ, like I was like trying okay. to sleep and get rest, and AJ was like trying to do skin to skin, would change <laughs> his diaper, was like trying to get him, and he would bring him to me, and he'd be like. I think he's hungry, but he wasn't like I would feed him and stuff. And then he would just, he just wanted to be with me the whole time. And well, yeah. okay. One of the thing is to like your mom super, super turned us off of using my pacifier. Like mm -hmm. the first two weeks mm -hmm. she told us we cannot do that whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So I didn't do that. I was like terrified to do anything like pacifier or like my pinky or anything like that. And so yeah. the whole night he was just screaming. Yeah. I think you woke up and I had my shirt off and I was trying to like, yeah, and Beckham was Do just, that. like, mm. screaming his head off. Like, he wanted nothing to do with AJ. That sounds horrible and funny, but he really didn't. Sure. He didn't want anything to do with AJ. Like, AJ would literally hand him to me, and he would, like, stop crying immediately. But then, yeah, and then you guys would fall asleep for, like, 20 minutes, and then you'd wake up again. Yeah. And I'd grab him. Oh, I'd and wake up, finally... and I was, like, falling asleep with him in my arms, and that's one thing they said not to do. They are yeah. like, do not, like, fall asleep with him in your arms. And so I would like start falling asleep and then I'd be like, can you grab him? And then you'd grab him and like instantly he would just start. Finally, it was like already almost six in the morning. It was early. I finally like did the little trick where you put your pinky, your pinky towards the top of their mouth, mm -hmm. towards the roof of their mouth. And you started sucking on like a pacifier and that was the only thing that like calmed them yeah. down. And I felt bad about it because I was like, well, we're not supposed to do anything like this. Like, you know, mm -hmm. a bottle or pacifier, yeah. but... My mom is very old school, so she, like, doesn't believe in formula, doesn't believe in a pacifier, like, nothing, like... She wanted us to use cloth diapers. Yeah, she was, <laughs> like, extremely crazy. <laughs> like, she's a great mom, and, like, that's how she raised me and my brother and stuff. Like, she used cloth diapers, breastfed us till we were, like, age two. Who knows what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, like, did everything, like, the very natural way. Like, I don't even think she had an epidural. Like, nothing. No, she didn't want you to get one. Yeah, she didn't want she me to get an epidural. Shit. And I'm like, uh, no, I'm getting an epidural. Like, I'm the complete opposite of my mom. And 
yeah, funny thing, like I struggled breastfeeding for the longest time and she made it so hard because she was like, no, you are not using formula. And I mean, she's a great mom. I'm not complaining or anything like that, but she's just very old school about the way she believed in things, so. Yeah, she'd come and see me, she'd be like, oh, did they give you formula? <laughs> oh yeah, she was like, just so against yeah, that made it. it hard, but, yeah. but yeah, the day was just absolutely insane and just, yeah, the best day ever. And it's just so crazy how Beckham is like, it reminds me so much of my dad and I just feel like, uh, yeah, I just feel like he has his soul in him, so. Yeah, it was just so special. Yeah, it was a hard day, but... Yeah, extremely hard day. It's hard for me Couldn't, to talk about it, yeah, but... Um, it is. I just thought it would be a good story for you guys because I just love hearing birth stories in general. Even yeah. even before I was pregnant, I would listen to birth stories, and they're just so interesting, so... What's, we, what's your advice? Like, next time you have a baby, what are you going to do different? What's your... To do different? Like, on the day you're going to the hospital, what are you going to do different? We were pretty prepared, to be honest. Yeah, I would say we were actually really prepared. We had everything that we needed for him. Um, we had our bags packed. We had... We didn't have the car seat ready. Mm -hmm. Did we? Mm -hmm. In the car? Well, we took it with us and I hooked it up before we left. Oh, okay, yeah. But I had to bring it out. Oh, yeah, We had, we had one of the stationary ones. It mm -hmm. was kind of like a pain in the ass to hook up. And then they told us we had to... Someone told us they had to inspect it. Yeah, so someone I told down us that. that was not true. Yeah. Not true at all. So but yeah, I don't time. know if, I mean, what I would do differently. Yeah, I think, think, I think, what, well, one thing that I would do differently is if, if I have a baby in the future or whatever, I definitely want to record everything. Like, I regret so much not letting him record stuff. And he took pictures he took, you know, a lot of pictures and stuff, finally, because I was just like, sure, do it. <laughs> yeah, you didn't care at that point. Yeah, I didn't care on. at that point. I was just so in love with him and obsessed with Beckham. And so, but yeah, I really wish he would have recorded it. But it just, it's hard when you're in that much pain. You just don't want cameras in your face. So, no, I get it. but they're fun to watch. So, and now we yeah. got this little guy. Oh, yeah. We're, it's nighttime. He's already asleep and we... We're watching him on the monitor <laughs> always but yeah do you have anything else you want to add in there no i was trying to think of something different i would do i would say because we were there for what three days three and a half days yeah they ended up keeping me in the hospital for three days because my blood work was still super abnormal and since me and beckham developed i forgot we forgot to mention that yeah since we both developed um like high fevers and an infection and like stuff like that they had me and him i think on antibiotics and stuff like that so yeah we were in the hospital for three days straight and yeah it was i think we were ready to go home and you're probably gonna get mad at me for saying this but i think i'd probably take like my playstation or something <laughs> yeah because... i would do that <laughs> Because I've seen videos of guys that like to get, like, when you're pushing, no. Because there's the first room. Oh, yeah. There's the first room, I forgot what it was called, but it was, like, where you delivered him. It was mm -hmm. a really nice room. We went to, like, a really nice hospital, too. Yeah. And then they took us to our own personal room. And there was times where they would take Beckham for, like, a couple hours to go take him to do stuff. I forgot what they do. Like, give him the circumcision and stuff like that. And you would sleep. Or there'd be times... Where you guys would sleep and I just couldn't sleep and I was just I mean we were there yeah. for a long time. Like, I, I guess if I'm gonna pass my time. I guess if I'm asleep I wouldn't care. Yeah, I wouldn't do it like but... when you're trying to breastfeed him <laughs> and he's screaming and I'm just doing but it was I'm very I have a very hard time like sitting still. But there was a lot going on, so I guess I wasn't I never felt like mm -hmm. you know. His yeah. eyes just opened. Uh oh. But and then what else would I do? I mean, that's it. Like, we had a really nice hospital. The food kind of sucked there. Luckily, we had people that would bring us food. Oh, that was, that was another thing. Just real quick. We don't want this video to be too long. But, oh, my God. Okay, I went into labor. <laughs> and when you go into labor, they do not want you to eat. 
or drink or drink anything in case I have to do a c-section they don't want any food in your system and stuff so we got there and I think yeah, his mom was like, I'm bringing coffee from Starbucks for everyone. So she like brought Starbucks and I wanted Starbucks so bad. <laughs> I wasn't allowed to have that. And then I think someone brought like burritos for everyone. And then later on, Chick someone brought Chick-fil-A for everyone. I and I was just like surrounded by food the whole time. And I was so pissed off because I was I so hungry and thirsty. Well, they were letting me drink water. And ice. Remember, right? And ice, yeah, but that's about it. And apple juice, I think. But... I didn't even get to eat my Chick Fil A. Remember? Because you were doing. Because I was doing the PowerPoint, thing. and then you had the baby, and then by the time I ate it, it was like three, three, four hours old. Oh yeah, but yeah, it was fun. It was, <laughs> it was a day of events. But yeah, we're gonna go ahead and end the video here. I hope you enjoyed our little story time, and yeah. It was so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see you in the next video. Bye, loves. Bye, loves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What would you do if it didn't record any of it? Oh, my God.